channel if you're new here welcome and yes it is spoops because it is officially October therefore we are kicking off the Halloween season and I could not be happier because whenever spoopy season hits I am at my most powerful so if you haven't already please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel because every weekday for the whole month of October I'm uploading a new Halloween themed makeup tutorial so with that being said I thought for the first video it'd be fun to kick off the spoopy season by turning myself into Vanellope Von Schweetz from Wreck It Ralph and in this video, not only am I going to be showing you how you can do her makeup, but I'm also going to be showing you how you can create her sweater. It's a very simple DIY. I'm also going to be showing you how you can create her little hair accessories, including her iconic licorice hair tie, and also show you how to style her wig as well. And not to mention the piece de resistance of this whole video, I'm also going to be showing you how you can create the You're My Hero cookie medal that Vanellope gives to Ralph. I know it's washing it out a bit, but I promise it's super cute and super edible looking, which is very very deceiving. So anyways, with that being said, if you guys are interested in seeing how I turn myself into Vanellope Von Schweetz, then just keep watching. Hey guys, so to get started, I'm going to be showing you how you can create the You're My Hero cookie medal that Vanellope makes for Ralph. So to start off, we need to go over the products that you're going to need. You're going to need some model magic, some paint brushes, some sparkly pink ribbon. I will have this one linked down below for you guys. Three colors of puff paint. I have white, mint, and blazing blue. Some glue adhesive. I ended up using some super glue and a hot glue gun instead of some E6000. Some paint that I got from Walmart. The colors are Classic Caramel, Toasted Marshmallow, and King's Gold. Some multicolor beads that I got from Joann's. I will have them linked down below if I can find them. A toothbrush to texturize the model magic. I'm also going to be using this silicone clay sculpting tool since I have long nails so it's kind of hard to blend certain edges out. Some tweezers. And a heart shaped cookie cutter. I really like this one that my mom had and technically it's actually like a pancake mold but if I can find it I will definitely link it down below for you guys. I'm then going to be rolling out a handful of model magic to the point to where I know that the mold will fit around it. I'm definitely going to be flattening it out a bit until I get the size that I like, making sure to hold the mold over it and that I like how it fits before pressing that in. With the cookie cutter still in place, I'm then going to be peeling away the excess model magic surrounding it, and then I'm going to be flipping the mold over with the model magic still inside and smoothing out the edges. So this is just a lot easier to do right here as opposed to later on. And then once you're happy with that, you can go ahead and push out your model magic. I went ahead and used the silicone paddle and my fingers to go ahead and smooth out the edges to my liking before taking the toothbrush and adding a little bit of texture onto the Model Magic. This is a technique that a lot of artists use with clay and even though Model Magic isn't quite clay, it still helps to give it a little bit more texture as opposed to just being a completely smooth surface. I went ahead and let that dry overnight. Sometimes with more Model Magic, you need to let it dry longer, but for this, I was okay with going ahead and starting to paint it. I took a mixture of my three paints into, I got this color, which I really liked. I didn't want it to be too pale or too yellow, but a nice in between. So I painted that over, and then you can also take a little sponge to add some texture with some darker paints as well around the edges, just to help kind of break up the color a bit and add a little bit more detail. Once the paint is dry, we can then work on our first layer of icing. This is the point when you definitely want to have a reference photo if you want to make it look as accurate as possible. And I really like using the puff paint to serve as the icing because this was definitely like the best option I could find whenever you're not using actual clay and you're using something like Model Magic. For actual clay, I know a lot of artists use Liquid Sculpey, which really makes that nice icing-like glaze. But I was definitely trying to figure out what I could do as an alternative since we are using Model Magic and puff paint definitely seemed like the best option and I really love how it turned out. So you're just going to be taking your white puff paint and applying that to the outline of the heart and then going ahead and filling this in. I find that for the smoothest layer you definitely get if you use circular motions when applying the puff paint, just small circular motions to fill it in. I also took a little spatula that I have and I just went ahead and smoothed it out a little bit. The biggest thing for this is you mostly want to focus on the outer edges being the smoothest because that is going to be what you see because the inner part is actually going to be covered up with your next layer of puff paint which is going to be the mint color. So once again, you want to wait for this to dry, and then once that is dried, you can go ahead and move on to your next layer of icing. So I had two options. I have mint and I have blazing blue. This was a little test area I had done. Blazing blue ended up being a little bit too dark in my opinion. You can try and mix the colors, however, it makes the application a lot more difficult. So I ended up opting for the mint color. 
So just like the first layer, we're going to be creating another outline of the heart and then just filling it in with small circular motions. Once that is completed, you're going to go ahead and leave that out to dry before we move on to the script. What I ended up doing is I used the reference photo a lot for this because I definitely wanted my cursive to be almost exactly like Vanellope's. And so I ended up doing a little practice round on the side over here before I ended up doing it on the actual cookie, just so I could kind of get an idea for spacing and how to make it look as accurate as possible. Then I just did the exact same thing on the cookie. So of course, once that's done, you want to leave that out to dry because next we're going to be doing the beads. So for this, of course, you could get multicolor puff paints and do the little dot sprinkles, but I wanted mine to be a little bit more three-dimensional and glam, so I actually got these multicolored beads from Joann's, and I thought that they looked so pretty. So to apply this to the cookie, I'm just doing a tiny drop of some super glue onto the spot that I'm going to put the bead. Then I'm going to be using some long tweezers to apply the bead where it's going to be. Of course, I am referencing the reference photo just so I can kind of get the same colors exactly where they need to be so once again it can be as accurate as possible. Next I'm just going ahead and cutting the ribbon to the length that I want it to be around my neck. I'm going to be gluing these two end pieces together just so that is already secure before attaching this to the back of the metal. I'm going to be making it a little bit long so that it's nice and sturdy on the back of the metal as opposed to just gluing it to the very tip of the heart. And there you have it. You have Ralph's You're My Hero cookie metal. I really love how this turned out. It's so cute. It feels nice. It's nice and lightweight because we used Model Magic. So if you're interested in recreating this, I highly recommend it. It is so much fun to do. Next, we're going to be making a Vanellope Von Schweetz's hoodie. So this is very easy. The products that you're going to need are you're going to need a teal hoodie. I will have this exact one linked down below. I got it from Amazon some pink shoelaces. You can of course use some pink yarn as well, but I liked how it had the aglet on it like most hoodies do. And a glue adhesive. I actually ended up using a hot glue gun because I liked the way that that worked a little better. So to get started on your hoodie, you're just going to be pulling out the blue lace and you're going to be manually pulling in the pink shoelace. This takes a lot of time. This is the most time consuming part, but it's definitely worth it and it looks super, super cute once you pull it through. We are then going to be double knotting the end of each shoelace and the great thing is because this shoelace set comes with two shoelaces, we're going to be cutting up the other shoelace into about four inch sizes and we're going to be gluing this to the little pocket part of the hoodie. I'm going to be creating an X with the first pieces and then two diagonal pieces on the right. And it's as easy as that. There is your completed Vanellope hoodie. Next, we're going to be making Vanellope's hair accessories. You are going to need some Model Magic, a plethora of paint colors, some mini clay cutters, paint brushes, and if you have long nails like me, a mini silicone sculpting tool. So to start off, I'm going to be making her hair tie. So in order to do this, I'm going to be rolling out a handful of Model Magic into a very long roll and then using my fingers to help flatten it out a little bit. This is really going to help create an accurate little licorice twist. So I'm going to start off in the middle and I'm going to start twisting it towards me on my right side and just continue doing this until the end and then make the end a little bit pointed. I'm then going to be doing the same thing on the opposite side, except I'm going to be twisting it away from me. Next, I'm just going to be using my fingers and my silicone tool to help smooth out some edges that may have cracked in the twisting process. And then you're just going to get it into the position that you like, just kind of figure out how you're gonna want it to be. And then you're going to let that dry overnight. Next, we're going to be moving on to her mini hair candies that she has. So I'm just going to be rolling out a little bit of Model Magic and then taking my circle cookie cutter, I'm going to be cutting in tiny circles and then just flattening that between my fingers. And we're going to be making so many of these. Honestly, it's better to have more than to not have enough. And so you're definitely gonna make a lot of these so that we can have a variety of colors. And then moving on to the rectangular sprinkles, I'm just going to be taking my rectangular cookie cutter with a tiny bit and just cutting out little slivers, molding it between my fingers so that the edges kind of blend together. And once again, we're going to be making so many. <laughs> And since the cake came with tiny mini heart and star cookie cutters, this is perfect because Vanellope actually has a few heart and star candies. So I'm just going to be poking this out and then using my silicone sculptor to help smooth out those edges. And these look so stinking precious. These were definitely my favorite to make. 
As for the tiny little peppermint twist that she has in her hair, I'm actually going to be taking a 4th Ray Beauty cap for the Glisten Up Mist and using that as my cookie cutter because it definitely ended up just being like the perfect size for this shape. So I'm actually going to be cutting out three or four of these as well. And then the last candy that we're going to be sculpting is the single gummy bear that she has in her hair. I thought that this looked so cute, so I'm actually just going to be taking tiny pieces of Model Magic, creating a body, and then rolling four pieces out to be its arms and legs. And then I even created a tiny like little tail for it too, even though you don't see it. And then for the head, I just took one circle and then put two tiny circles as ears on top, so it kind of ends up looking like a Mickey head, and then sticking all of those together. And then so once you do that, it should start to look a little bit like this. And those are all your candies. We just want to leave that out to dry overnight before we paint them. So in the next morning, I just took some of my red paint and I just applied this all over front and back of my little hair tie. I'm then going to be taking a metallic red glittery paint and I'm going to be putting this right on top of that just to help give it a little bit more dimension and some sparkle. I'm then going to be mixing a little bit of red with a darker red and I'm just going to be applying this to the creases just so we can have a little bit more shadow and dimension. I'm then going to be painting my mini candies. I did this all by hand, so honestly, if you already have a multitude of spray paints, I highly recommend just using spray paint because it's so much faster and easier. I, however, did not want to spend the money on spray paints and I didn't have too many fun colors available for myself I have a lot of browns and grays and blacks so I had to paint all these by hand and it's definitely very messy and time-consuming so if you have spray paint or you just don't want to take the time to hand paint these I highly recommend doing that otherwise look at me just going ahead and going by hand so I ended up choosing a few colors based off of the reference photos of Vanellope so I took a green a yellow a pink a teal, a purple, and an orange. Those seemed to be the main colors in Vanellope's hair. I did notice whenever I was applying the candies in her hair though, and I was using the reference photo again, that she does seem to have a few tiny red ones as well, if that's something you're interested in incorporating. But for me, I was very happy with how this turned out. And then went ahead and added the chocolate swirls inside of my green peppermint with some brown paint. And for the last steps, we're going to be using a tiny bit of spray paint. I ended up finding this sparkly red glitter spray paint in the garage, so I went ahead and put that over my red hair tie as well, and I really love the way that this looked. And then last but not least, I'm going to be taking a clear top coat spray paint and spraying this over absolutely everything. This is really going to help give the candy a nice glossy finish. Once the candies are good to go, we can go ahead and start on styling the wig. So this actually ended up being a little tricky just because I haven't worked on a wig in easily over a year, like since last Halloween. So this was a little refresher course for me in making sure I can, you know, even do a ponytail with a wig. So I just separated out the bangs to start off and then I'm actually just going to be cutting them. Um, this is not how any hairstylist would cut bangs, but this is how I cut them. I did them in the way that gives hairstylists nightmares. So I'm just going to be cutting diagonally upwards, starting from the bottom. And honestly, Vanellope has a little bit more of distressed hair anyway. It's kind of a little bit more choppy because it kind of fits her personality. So it definitely ended up working out and I still think it looked very cute. But if you really want help on cutting bangs the right way, I would definitely look up a tutorial. Um, it's really not too crazy bad, but if you're a little worried, I would definitely recommend that as well, but I literally just straight cut it. Um, but I really liked how it turned out. So once that is done, I'm just going to be teasing the bangs really intensely and then just making sure to hairspray them. The two hair products I am going to be using that I highly recommend for this is the Got To Be Glued Freeze Spray and the Got To Be Glued Spiking Gel. These products are amazing, especially for cosplay wigs. It really just helps to make everything stay in place. So as you can see, I'm going ahead and just hairspraying this right now. And then of course you can go ahead and still maneuver it around and then it's going to still be manageable until it is dry. And I'm going to be taking the spiking gel and pulling the end of the bangs to a point. I'm going to be doing the same thing on the other side. The other side is a little bit more casual. It's not quite so structured. So I kind of alleviated putting too much gel on that side. And then once that's done, we're going to be moving in to doing the ponytail. So because there's so much hair in this wig, I'm actually going to be doing it layer by layer. So I'm going to be taking the top half of the wig using my comb to help pull everything together. If you're curious, I am using a wig comb. If you don't have one, I would recommend using a wide tooth comb instead. And so then you're just going to be slowly 
pulling it up starting from the top till you get to the bottom. I'm sure that there is a better way to do this. I was just doing it in the way that I kind of know best. Just be aware that there is so much hair in this wig. Um, that it definitely just takes a lot of time to get it up there and make sure it looks nice and smooth. I will make sure to have this wig linked in the description box so you guys can find it easily. It is from Arda Wigs. And so now moving on, I'm going to be taking a hair tie and applying this right at the root of the wig. I'm going to make sure that's kind of a somewhat off-center side pony to my left whenever I'm wearing the wig. And then I'm actually going to be adding another hair tie as well. And as you can see, I added a little black clip. I personally like to do this with my hair because my hair is very long. So to kind of help keep it sticking straight up, I use a black clip in the very back of the wig. Next, I'm going to be sliding on the little licorice hair tie into place because now is definitely the time before we really start adding structure to this ponytail. So now I'm going to start teasing the back of the ponytail, making sure that it's teased to the point to where the hair is wanting to stick straight up. And of course you're going to want to hairspray this and then you're going to be lightly brushing it out and brushing it down so that way the ponytail has more volume and it has more structure to it. However, it doesn't look messy or teased. It still looks nice and smooth. Then I'm just going to be hairspraying the ponytail and I'm then going to be twisting it in my hand. This is really nice because it does give a nice soft curl effect without it being too crunchy or structured. If you're going to a convention, I would definitely recommend maybe using some of the spiking gel throughout the ponytail. But for me, this worked out really well. However, I will be taking some of that spiking gel right down at the tip. And this is going to be really nice for just kind of solidifying the shape of the wig without it being too stiff because this is really kind of just gonna seal it all together so that way the hair isn't going to want to move around too crazy much. Now that the styling is done, we can finally move on to adding the candies throughout the hair. So for this, I personally was using a reference photo, multiple reference photos of an LP, where she's looking at different ways just so I can kind of figure out which pieces go where, and I tried to replicate it with the pieces that I created. The only thing that I noticed that I could have made was I have the brown and green peppermint, but she also does have a red and white peppermint on her left side, the side with the shorter bang. So honestly, if you want to create one, feel free, but I'm just applying this exactly where I see the need to. I'm using a hot glue gun and just applying it to the back of the candies and then just using some tweezers to stick that in the hair. And I really, really love how this turned out. Of course, we're going to add some in the ponytail as well. And this just ends up looking really, really cute. And I'm so happy with how it turned out. And that is how you make Vanellope's hair accessories and style her wig. Next, we're moving on to Vanellope's makeup. For this, I'm going to start off by taking my Milk Hydro Grip Primer and just applying this all over my face. I'm then going to be taking my Anastasia Beverly Hills Luminous Foundation in the color 220N and applying this all over my face using my IT Cosmetics Airbrush Blurring Foundation Brush. I'm then going to be taking my Buckle Bunny Beauty Cream to Powder Foundation in Mocha and using this as contour. So I'm going to be applying it to the places on my face that I definitely want to add shadow or deepen. So this is my cheekbones, my nose, my forehead, and my chin. And then I'm just going to go ahead and softly blend this out. Next, I'm going to be taking my ColourPop No Filter Concealer in the Light 14 and applying this to the areas I now want to highlight. So this is going to be under my eyes, my forehead, my nose, under my cheekbones, my cupid's bow, and my chin as well. Then I'm just going to go ahead and blend this out. I'm then going to be taking some translucent powder and just setting all of these creams before moving on to my eyes where I'm going to be taking my Smashbox 24 Hour Photo Finish Primer and applying this to my eyelids. Next, I'm going to be taking my ColourPop ColourPop Land Candy Castle Palette. I'm going to be taking Lord Licorice and just applying this all over my eyelid to help set that primer. I'm then going to be taking my King Candy eyeshadow and I'm going to be applying this to the outer corner of the eye and then just blending this inwards in the crease. I'm also going to be blending this down to the lower lash line as well. I'm then going to be mixing Grandma Nut and Candy Crush together and I'm going to be applying this on the outer corner of my eyelid and then also the inner corner as well and then just blending that together in the crease. Also making sure to blend that down to the lower lash line as well. I'm then going to be popping over to my Disney ColourPop It's a Princess Thing palette, grabbing some Triton and applying that to the outer corner and crease of my eyes as well. And once again, bringing that down to my lower lash line. 
I'm then going to be taking a gloppy from my Candy Castle palette and just really deepening up that crease and helping add more dimension. And then of course you want to make sure to blend this out as you go just to make sure that you don't have any harsh lines. For my highlight color, I'm going to be taking Prince Charming from my Princess Thing palette and just applying that right on to my eyelid and then taking Fairy Godmother and applying this to the very center of the eyelid to serve as a small transition shade. I'm then going to be taking my Anastasia Beverly Hills Black Liquid Eyeliner and creating a nice bold wing on my lash line. I then went ahead and applied a little bit of brown eyeliner to the waterline on the outer corners of my eyes and then also took a little liquid liner and applied that right underneath as well and then just made sure to blend this out just so it fades nicely into my lower lash line. I'm then going to be bronzing up my face with my Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer. I'm going to be applying this to my cheekbones, my forehead, my nose, and my chin. Before moving on to blush, where I'm going to be taking my ColourPop Midnight Masquerade Disney Esmeralda Blush in Court of Miracles and just applying this to my cheeks, blending it up towards my temples, and then also applying a decent amount to my nose as well. I'm then going to be topping this with some of my ColourPop ColourPop Land Gumdrop Pass Blush just to kind of help add a little bit more luminosity to this look and also a few more purple tones as well. For my highlight, I'm going to be going into my BH Cosmetics Spotlight Highlight Palette, mixing all the colors together and just applying this to my cheekbones. I'm also going to be applying this to the inner corner of my eyes as well. Moving on to lips, I'm going to be taking my ColourPop Lippy Pencil in Little One and just outlining my lips before moving on to taking my Milani Fruit Fetish in Blueberry Acai Gloss and just applying this all over my lips. I'm then going to be prepping my eyelashes by curling them before moving on to taking my Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara and just sweeping this through my eyelashes to prep them for my fake lashes. I'm going to be taking my E, &E Cherry Lashes and just popping that on to my upper lash line. And last but not least, I'm going to be setting my face with my Milk Hydro Grip Set and Refresh Spray. And that is how you can completely transform yourself into Vanellope Von Schweetz from Wreck-It Ralph. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment down below what you'd like to see next. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of my videos, especially since I will be uploading a new Halloween-themed makeup tutorial every weekday for the entire month of October. Also, if you haven't already, please consider supporting me on Patreon. You can subscribe for as little as a dollar a month to receive all exclusive behind-the-scenes access to sneak peeks of upcoming projects, photos, and tips and tricks that I really don't share anywhere else. So once again, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye! Tut tut! As your merciful princess, I hereby decree that everyone who was ever mean to me shall be... <laughs> executed. What's your name? Uh, Ralph. wreck it, Ralph. You're not from here, are you? No, well, yeah, I mean, I mean not from right in this area. I'm just doing some work here. What kind of work? There's some routine candy tree trimming. Uh, you probably want to stand back. In fact, this whole area is technically closed while we're trimming. Who's we? Candy tree department. Oh. Uh, where is everybody else? Oh, uh, it's just me today. Uh, so you just meant like the royal we? Yup. That's right. Hey, are you a hobo? No, I'm not a hobo. But I am busy. Okay, so you go, go home. What's that? Didn't hear you. Your breath is so bad it made my ears numb. Listen, I try to be nice. I try to be nice. You're mimicking You're me. You're mimicking me. Okay. <laughs> that is rude, <laughs> and this <laughs> conversation is <laughs> over. Uh, I wouldn't grab that branch if I were you. I'm from the candy tree department, so I know it's, it's a double strike. <laughs> double stripes break, good doy. Hey, why are your hands so freakishly big? Uh, I don't know. Why are you so freakishly annoying?